This is Image Thief. The Great Wall is the architectural symbol of China. Over four years here, I've been able to visit and hike many parts of the wall, and I've pretty much enjoyed them all. I've also been a scuba diver and underwater photographer for many years. Although I've dived all over Southeast Asia, Beijing isn't known for marine sports, and I more or less gave it up when I moved to China. I'd certainly never combined Great Wall tourism with my love of diving. But Stephen Schwankert of Sino Scuba in Beijing gave me the chance to do just that at Panjiakou, where a section of the Great Wall lies at the bottom of a reservoir. So, a three and a half hour marathon drive has brought us from urban Beijing uh, through Tangshan and some of the more squalid towns in the area here to the lovely reservoir and dam, which we've been told that for Olympic security reasons we are not allowed to photograph. This seems a little bit weird since I can imagine many higher priority targets, but when the local authorities say no photographs, we do try to comply, except of course for the photographs we've <clears throat> already taken. Now we're solving an issue, which is that although the lake is right here, it is beneath us, and between us and the lake is a trail that would give a mountain goat the shakes. Normally I'm an intrepid sort and I'd have no problems with this, but the idea of horsing myself, my huge dive bag, my camera, my backpack, and two bottles down this trail to get to the water is not really appealing. Fortunately, we're engineering a solution with our one 4x4, and hopefully a few round trips will get all our gear and us to the lakeshore. In any event, we found a longer but much smoother way down to the lake, and a few minutes later we were hauling gear onto a speedboat and climbing aboard ourselves. And then it was off across the water to our dive site. In fact, the whole photography prohibition seems a little ridiculous considering that a simple Google or Baidu search yields glorious high-resolution images and a range of informative websites, including one that helpfully diagrams the workings of the sluice gates. Technologically inclined near-do-wells will also find plenty of details on Google Earth. But we didn't preoccupy ourselves with such bureaucratic details. Instead, we concentrated on the splendors of the reservoir and the adventure awaiting us. And it wasn't long before we started to see remnants of the mighty wall on the hilltops around us. Our destination was a popular spot where the remains of the wall follow a ridge and plunge into the reservoir. It was high summer and the water was low enough that the remains of a flooded watchtower actually projected from the reservoir just meters away from where we landed. This would be our dive site for the day. Here it is, boys. Welcome to your dive site. So today we'll be As is often the case with Chinese diving and Chinese tourism in general, the facilities were adequate, if less than entirely modern. There was a floating restaurant and guest house, a supply of meals waiting to be cooked, and an open privy in full view of the Great Wall above. But there was no disputing the splendor of the location, especially given a rare North China blue sky day. So we geared ourselves up and hit the water. Reservoirs aren't known for great visibility, and our early encounters were not very dramatic. In fact, at first, the most interesting thing we found was the thousands upon thousands of freshwater shrimp that infested the wall, a discovery that, for some reason, reminded me of my year living in Shanghai. The main focus of our diving became the flooded watchtower. With intact archways and tunnels, this was a bit more interesting than the shrimp. But the limited visibility and the wall's lack of features meant that diving at Panjiakou was very different from my previous Chinese reservoir experience at the Lion City in Zhejiang, where there are fantastically detailed carvings to explore. But I'm an old shipwreck fan, and any chance to encounter history underwater is fascinating. The dive made me rethink how I experienced the Great Wall. Classic Great Wall tourism is panoramic, if the air is good, spanning mountaintop views from which you can see the wall rippling away into the far distance, ridge after ridge, peak after peak. Underwater, in a reservoir, it doesn't work that way. You can only see a meter, and this forces you into intimacy with the wall, and the experience narrows to what is inches away from you and what you can explore with your fingertips. It's not a replacement for hiking the hills around Beijing on a clear day, but it is different, and not many people get to experience the Great Wall this way. The Panjiakou Reservoir is about 200 kilometers from Beijing, and was created in the late 1970s when the Luan River was dammed to improve the water supply for the city of Tianjin. The dam itself, although now apparently top secret, is over 100 meters high and a kilometer long, and the reservoir behind it spreads over 70 square kilometers. Surrounded by dramatic mountains and strips of the Great Wall, it's a popular recreation area today, and the local government, perhaps worryingly, has ambitious plans to develop the area. 
The Great Wall at the reservoir is a 15th century Ming Dynasty construction. It forms part of the defenses that guarded the passes leading inland from the fortified Manchurian port of Shanghai Guan. Much of the wall around the reservoir and the surrounding area is still visible, although unrestored, but today some sections of the wall and the remains of a few local villages lie beneath the water. Parts of the reservoir are reported to be over 80 meters deep, but on this trip we never got deeper than eight. Unfortunately, there was only time for one dive, and what we all felt was a pretty well-earned lunch, and then it was time to load up the speedboat again and head back across the reservoir toward our waiting cars and the long drive back to Beijing. So, we dived the Great Wall, and it wasn't perhaps quite as grand as I had first imagined. The visibility wasn't great and the water was a little bit shallow, but we had a good look around and we had a good time. And let's face it, any day in the water beats sitting at home. And after weeks in Beijing, there's nothing like a touch of pastoral Chinese scenery to restore the soul. Word has it there's a dam hidden around here somewhere. <laughs> 